If you want to jump into artificial intelligence and build things with AI today, how should you start? Things are so fast changing. My stomach hurts whenever I think about it. Loads of open source tools and models are being created every single day. Microsoft Copilot is being launched very soon, which brings AI to all Microsoft Office applications. So if your hands touch keyboard for work, this is going to change your job in the next few years. This motivates me. If there's something that's going to change my life and work forever, I want to learn everything about it. I want to learn how AI is built, how to build with AI, and how to use it to enhance my work. I think as someone working in the tech field, you want to be in the position where you can build things with AI rather than just consume it. So today I'll be sharing with you a roadmap as a one-stop shop for you to expand your AI skill set, learn the fundamentals of AI, and learn to build with AI. Even if you don't have any background in machine learning, mathematics, statistics, or programming, I hope you walk away with some useful ideas of where to start. Let's get started. So why should we bother learning AI? This whole AI, machine learning, and deep learning thing has been around since the 1950s. The AI we often talk about today is generative AI, which is a subset of machine learning and deep learning. Generative AI can now write code, generate stunning images, writing music, diagnosing rare conditions, creating outline for presentations, reading images, and much, much more. Companies are looking into implementing AI solutions to solve their specific problems. This is a goldmine because everything is still so new. So if you have the knowledge and know how to build things with AI, you can create huge impact. As with anything in its early days, AI models still have many issues that need to be solved. They are not yet reliable or stable, they potentially possess biases, among other things. That's why we need more people who have the in-depth understanding and can get to the bottom of the technologies to solve various problems. Even if you don't build things yourself, the knowledge can help you avoid a lot of misunderstanding and misinformation, such as AI can do everything as long as you got the right plugins. Okay, when it comes to learning AI, of course, there's no one-size-fits-all roadmap. You might have seen a lot of local code or no code tools to help you get started with AI and even develop things like an AI chatbot. You can certainly play with them to have the first feeling of how things work and what is possible and even build great real world solutions with them. As you get more into it, you might realize that those tools might feel like a little bit of a black box. They might not be so flexible that you can customize a lot of things or sometimes your solution works and sometimes it fails. So if you really want to learn how artificial intelligence works and build tools that are reliable, scalable, and can be tailored to your specific use case, I think that's when you hit the ceiling and can't rely solely on those low-code platforms anymore. Personally, I often prefer to have a solid understanding of how things work from ground up. So let me walk you through a roadmap for learning AI. You can download this full roadmap in PDF together with my recommended learning resources. You can find the link in the description below. On the fundamental level, you want to learn the basics of programming. Python is one of, if not the most used programming languages for machine learning, deep learning, and AI. So some coding knowledge in Python would be essential. For working with Python, you can certainly use several IDEs or integrated development environments. For example, Visual Studio Code, PyCharm, or Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter Notebook is my favorite environment to start learning Python. Here's a simple setup of a Python project in Jupyter Notebook. And here's the same project in Visual Studio Studio code. You can use any of these tools and they are completely free. If you've never coded in Python before, make sure to at least get yourself familiar with the four basics of Python. Firstly, data types and the operations that you can do on them, data structures and how to work with them, conditionals, loops and functions, and lastly, object-oriented programming and using external libraries. When learning Python, the most essential libraries to learn are NumPy for computing and working 
using with numerical data, pandas for wrangling tabular data or data frames. When you're already familiar with those libraries, you can start learning some other libraries that you can use for your AI project. For example, matplotlib is a popular library for data visualization, spacey for basic text processing functionalities, and so on. For working with large language models, Langchain is a very useful library to learn to develop multiple applications on top of LLMs. What's nice with Python is that there are so many open source libraries that you can use to develop almost anything you want. The next thing I'd recommend you learning is Git version control. If you're not yet familiar with it, Git is an open source software for tracking changes in your project, basically managing versions of your project. Version control is essential when you are collaborating with other people in a large or complex project. There are actually just a few concepts you need to understand to start using Git, as shown in this diagram. A funny thing is that many people actually confuse Git with GitHub. GitHub is a hosting platform for Git repositories so that you can share your project with other people across the internet. Meanwhile, Git is the software itself. Through GitHub, you can directly see and contribute to other people's projects. So how can you start using Git? The easiest way is to install GitHub Desktop. It's a user interface tool to help you work with Git. Or if you prefer to use the terminal, you can also interact with Git through the terminal commands. I always keep a small cheat sheet here to remind me of some common Git commands, which I find super convenient and helpful. Another essential thing to learn in your AI journey is using APIs. Knowing how to use APIs is a magical skill that opens up a whole new world of possibilities. API stands for Application Programming Interface. It's a way for computer programs to communicate with each other. Basically, there are two jargons you need to learn. Yeah, just two. API request, which is also referred to as API call, and API response. Depending on the API, you can make a request for data or for model prediction. In the case of ChatGPT, without knowing how to use the API, you'll be limited to the chat interface on the OpenAI website. Don't get me wrong, I love the ChatGPT website, but you can't develop your own tool this way or integrate the AI model into your current system. Okay, on to the next level. We are concerned with the theoretical fundamentals of AI. I recommend you at least get some high level theoretical understanding of AI and its subfields such as machine learning, neural networks and deep learning, and optionally computer vision, NLP, and reinforcement learning. Okay, if we look at this diagram again, deep learning is a subset of machine learning. Traditional machine learning algorithms mostly fall into either supervised learning. This is when you actually have the target labels to train the prediction model on or unsupervised learning when there's no target labels. In general, these algorithms only work for tabular data. Think of data tables with each record being a row and each data feature being a column in that table. If you're interested, you can quickly go over some machine learning jargons and get some high level understanding of these algorithms. They're all cool to learn, but since AI today uses deep learning, I think to save time, you can probably just jump right into deep learning. I think you will anyway learn the essential machine learning concepts along the way. As we just briefly talked about, neural network is the algorithm behind deep learning. It works incredibly well for unstructured data like text and images. For neural network, you want to understand the main concepts such as forward propagation, back propagation, gradient descent algorithm, and how weights are updated in the network. If you like some math, you can try to understand all the calculations underlying the neural network. They are really not too difficult to understand, so don't shy away from it. Neural network in itself is pretty simple and maybe even a bit inferior from the mathematical statistical point of view. No offense here to the fathers of deep learning, but when you stack many, many network layers together into a complex architecture, this is when things get interesting. The neural network now can start recognizing 
recognizing digits, classifying cats and dogs, to predicting the next tokens in the case of LLMs today. Convolutional neural networks used to be a very popular architecture for deep learning with images because it can recognize patterns on images. And recurrent neural networks used to be very popular for text modeling because it can understand sequences. However, these architectures have become pretty obsolete since the invention of transformers architecture in 2017. This is the architecture behind the foundation language models nowadays. Transformers outperform pretty much all the earlier architectures, so you might want to jump into it right away and reverse engineer the knowledge if you see any gap. As you work with the AI models, you also want to get yourself a high level understanding of how the foundation models underlying them are trained. In general, they're trained through an unsupervised process. It's up to you to learn more about the nitty gritty details of training your language models. When working with language models, you might hear the common term text embeddings. This is a very useful concept to understand. Text embedding converts text into vectors of numbers. Nowadays, we often forget that computers cannot actually understand human languages. Computers can only understand numbers. So this conversion step is really necessary. There have been many embedding models created with ever smarter ways to capture meanings into those vectors. No matter what you're learning or where you are on this journey, you can build relevant projects to get your hands dirty and experiment with things. This will help you connect the dots and challenge your own understanding. For example, if you're learning Python, you can build your first neural network in Python using Keras or TensorFlow library. It's only a few lines of code. If it's too high level, you can try to write a neural network and implement gradient descent from scratch with NumPy. When you're learning the theories, a real world project would be to pick one specific concept you find interesting and write a blog post or make a video on it. This will help you understand the concept deeper and help other people too. If you're ready to tackle more complex AI projects, you can build a real-world application. For example, you can create a document retrieval app, basically to create a chat with PDF kind of application where people can upload a document and ask specific questions based on the document. Or you can create your own chatbot. I also want to mention that no matter what project you do, big or small, make sure you document them for reference for yourself and share that with other people through articles and social media posts. You really never know how many people might find it useful. The next thing I'd recommend is to develop mental models around AI and perhaps specialize in a certain area within AI if you want to. I think reading books about AI is a great way to go through the noise on social media and get a more well-rounded background of AI. This also equips you with with the right frameworks and tools to reason and interpret things that you see or hear about AI today. You can also find my AI book list in the roadmap. Personally, I also find it so crazy how much important stuff around AI that is not talked about more widely on the mainstream media. There are many topics around AI that don't make headlines. For example, advanced prompt engineering methods to improve the quality of the LLM response, like self-consistency, chain of thoughts prompting or automatic prompting. Autogen project by Microsoft that allows you to develop LLM applications using multiple agents that can converse with each other to solve tasks. Advanced document QA with multimodal documents that can work well with complex tables, images, and other data structures. AI security and hacking. The other day I watched a YouTube video of a researcher who uncovers some serious security issues with machine learning models. Models. This is a very overlooked area until now, so if you know computer security very well, please do humanity a favor and look into this. We also have AI safety research, that is the area to find ways to align AI's goals with humans' goals, because if we fail to do this, we are literally screwed. And finally, AI regulations if you're interested in laws. In Europe, the EU AI Act is one of the big things that are coming to regulate the use of AI. The US government also recently passed the executive order on the safe, secure, and trustworthy development and use of artificial intelligence to address the potential risks of AI. No one knows how helpful these regulations are going to be. So if you want to dive into any of these areas, it's generally quite easy 
easy to find information on these topics by reading books, research papers, articles, and watching videos on my channel, for example. I also follow some newsletters like the Batch Newsletter by Andrew Ng to get informed about some important AI developments. Medium is also where I often find really useful articles. I sometimes dive into research papers as well to learn about some new cool research. My friend Sophia Young has an awesome channel where she breaks down all the cool research around AI. So make sure to check out her channel if you like this stuff. We are still in very early days of AI and we don't know how things will turn out in the next few years. But one thing we know for sure is that things are changing faster and faster. The only way to keep up is to continuously learn. So I hope you found this video helpful. And if you like the video, smash the like button and subscribe to my channel for future content around data science and AI. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.